When is supernatural? I remember when a woman died in my service, and I hate when people die in my service because I don't allow the devil, the demon of death, to come in my services. I told him to stay out of here. Stay the freak out. But this is when he was testing me. I was a younger preacher, and those devils, they'll test you when you're younger in ministry. You know? This lady died in my service, and I mean, the whole service was almost wrecked because her children was just, you know, crying and whatever. They brought her in because she, uh, she was already two weeks past her death date for cancer. She was thin and bones, but they brought her there to be healed. And I was preaching a little long that night. I don't really, I'm not really long-winded. <laughs> now, if you say I am, I'm going to pour some cold water on you. So she dies in my service. I mean, the kids just start screaming. I'm wondering what's happening. I'm trying to continue the service so they don't, the devil don't mess up this service. You understand? <laughs> and, uh, you know, and the Lord says, you know, you cannot ignore this. And, and she was dead. They had her on the floor. They had called the, um, the paramedics and they pronounced her dead, whatever. All this was going on. I was constantly preaching past it. The Lord says, you go back there and you breathe on her. Just <laughs> Just like when I breathe on the crowds and they fall out, hundreds, thousands of them at one time, and they because they receive the power of God. But he says, go back and just breathe on her, and, and she needs to get up from the dead. I mean, the paramedics had put the sheet over all this stuff, and they were just crying. I, this, my whole service was going to be destroyed. And I want to say this to ministers. You never let the devil control the service. You never let him control the atmosphere. You don't let an atmosphere of doom and gloom come in because our God is a God of life. We have control of the situation. So I went back there and I breathed on her just one time. He didn't tell me to say nothing, get up, nothing. Just breathe on her. And the moment I breathed on her, her eyeballs came up open. Just like that. She had to be carried in she was so weak. When she came back alive, she got all her strength back. God also healed her of cancer. She didn't have no more cancer. How amazing is that? And some of y'all have seen that on video. You've seen that in our tapes. This is nothing I'm making up. This is all caught on, on, on video. So you, you understand, I saw that, but the w wind is powerful. It is supernatural. If somebody is dead, just the way God brought out them to life, you can bring them back to life by. <laughs> that was for you ministers. You don't have to raise the dead all the same way. The Ezekiel didn't raise the dead the same way. God told him to command the wind to breathe on them. And they came alive. How did I get into that? We raised up a group here who has emptied a whole hospital here in Detroit. Everyone in wheelchairs were healed. Everyone on crutches and canes were healed. Yes, sir. I'm going to tell you something. We are now seeing whole Muslim countries being visited by the Lord Jesus Christ. We're talking about over 300, 500,000 people or a million in one whole Muslim country. Jesus appearing to everyone by night in a dream and a whole nation being saved. Yes. You know, I, I used to... You know, I started out as a strong evangelist and a prophet. And you know, evangelists, they always, you know, people always say, oh, that's the evangelistical version. They always exaggerate. <laughs> Come on, let's be honest. Evangelists exaggerate. There's 50,000 people there. Oh, it was 200,000. And so then when I started to find out that exaggeration was a form of a fruit of pride. Because pride want to make you stretch and be greater than what you are. Instead of appreciating where you are. And just telling the blanket truth. <laughs> Exaggerating. Adding. Can we be real here today? Come on, I said, we in Rosh Hashanah, we repenting, right? Amen. 
You got to be honest. This is how I went to the Lord in my early days. Just, you know what? That's exaggeration. I need to stop that. What is making me feel like I need to do that? Say something greater than what some is. Why can't I appreciate what God just did? Because pride and lust make you never satisfied with anything. You can't appreciate anything God does, whether it's big or small, because you're always wanting something more. That's actually called adultery, spiritually. I mean, you all know before this, Jesus was starting to appear to hundreds of thousands, millions through my life and ministry. Because, see, I, I, I'm, I, I'm not one of those people who like to exaggerate and just lie. I'm a bottom line person. I don't believe in faking and lying and making up stuff. Presence of God fellowshipping with the Lord in his presence face to face. And uh, I'm just so happy to be with you again. So uh, keep telling me where you're watching from. Uh, some of you still haven't told me where you're watching from. I, I know you're on here and you just you're not telling me where you're watching from. And I, I see you. So you need to tell me where you're watching from. Tell me where you're watching from. Where are you from? What nation you're from? I'm ruined forever. Face to face with Jesus ruined me forever from religion. That's right, I like that. Cause I am the cookie monster. And I only leave crumbs, I eat the cookies. Copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, education and research. Fair use is not an infringement of copyright. All my content is found on the public domain. I follow the fair use dealings and fair use guidelines with my opinions and news that I report to my subscribers about the topic of Apostle David E. Taylor and the JMMI cult. A cult disguised as a church?